Okay, so by now, we all know what a toxic person is. We know how to spot them, we know what to do with them once we do spot them, and we know how to carry on with our life. But my friends, what if after you've cleaned house and removed all those toxic people from your circle, what if you come to find out that you are that toxic person in your life? Hello, and welcome or welcome back to another video. On this channel, we talk about self-love, productivity, and habit building. So I've shared pretty openly how I have been healing, healing from relationships that have been in disrepair for a long time, connecting with people, creating new ways of being in relationships, setting boundaries, communicating them to the people that I love the most so that I show up as my most authentic self in those spaces and hopefully that invites them to bring their most authentic self into that space with me. But recently, what I have come to find out is that I have created space to see where I self-sabotage. And these are little things that I do, okay? On a whole, I eat right, I get enough sleep, I have set my routines, I work out, I stay hydrated, which reminds me, But every now and then, I fall off my high horse and I find myself stepping into a past self. A past self where I know that if I do this or if I don't do this, I know how I'm going to feel. I know the anxiety that it's going to create, but I do it anyway. So now that I'm focusing more on myself, and creating better habits for myself, I'm also learning how to move away from this pull that's pulling me into paths that I have already dug <laughs> and I have trekked. I know where they lead. It's not anything good. And I'm trying to create other pathways. So here are four things that I am learning how to do. I got a package. Hold, please. Hi, I'm back. I am going to share four tips or four strategies that helped me or is helping me because I am still a work in progress, aren't we all? So the first thing I had to do was grow in my awareness of the self-sabotaging habits. So I had to continue to repeat patterns and also recognize the anxiety that they caused. A perfect example, I would wait until my gas tank was at E. The light would go on and I would get a notification on my dashboard and it would say, I have 20 miles left of gas until I'm left on the side of the road somewhere. I did this continuously over and over and over again. I had to grow in that awareness, I had to feel that anxiety of searching for a gas station in perhaps an unfamiliar neighborhood, all because I wouldn't gas up. Step number two, I had to forgive myself for these self-sabotaging habits. 
I had to forgive and accept that this is kind of who I am. I'm flawed. I'm not perfect. And that's okay. The goal is not perfection. The goal is to recognize a pattern and figure out ways to create new patterns that will allow more space in your life, more ease in your life, more joy in your life. So forgiveness for me was key. The fact that I didn't stop and get gassed did not make me a horrible person. It did not make me a dumb person. It made me a person. Full stop. Third thing I had to do, now that I've grown in my awareness, I know what the problem is. I forgive myself for not doing something sooner. The third thing I had to do was to devise a plan. I know myself better than anyone knows me. And I know that my best friend are to-do lists. For some reason, if I write it down, it's going to happen. It's as if it's entered into the real world. It's left my mind and it's come now into the physical world. And now that I've written it somewhere, it's going to happen. So one of the things that I started doing is using my phone to create reminders and to-do lists. Now some of those reminders you can put deadlines for. Some of the tasks that I would throw on there was not time sensitive and I just needed to put it there to clear my mind so that as I move through through life and through my day and through my week and through my month, I always knew that there is this list of things that I need to do and if I find myself Let's say I have a bag of clothes that need to be dropped off at the dry cleaner. I throw that on my list. And if I'm close to the dry cleaners at some point, I know to just drop those clothes off. Then I have the satisfaction of opening up my phone and hitting that task and completing it and watching it disappear from my list, which for me, feels amazing. It is a dopamine hit for sure. So just last week, I added get gas on my phone, my to-do list. And I, at the time, had half a tank of gas. I had decided that that was the mark, that when my gas tank was at half, I would go and get gas. And that is just what I did. It was the smallest little thing, but I stopped, I got the gas, I filled up. I felt all kinds of joy. I felt amazing that I had set out, I promised myself that I was going to fill up my gas tank at half a tank and I actually did it. And that felt amazing. Which brings me to the fourth and final tip. Repeat and build on your wins. Filling my gas tank is a small win. Okay? I have to fill up my gas tank or else I'm not going anywhere. That's a small win. I started to then build on that small win. First of all, I shared it. I shared that win with my husband. I shared that win with my mom. I shared that win. I said, you know, I often self-sabotage by waiting until the last moment to fill up my gas tank. And guess what, guys? I didn't do that this time. So after I filled up my gas tank, I knew that I was having people over to my home that weekend. I knew I needed to go grocery shopping. I knew I needed to 
meal plan. What am I even going to serve them? What do I want to serve? Is there going to be a signature cocktail? Put that on my to-do list, I said. Meal plan and signature cocktail research. And I actually did it. I set a deadline, I think, for midweek. So on Wednesday, on my lunch break, I looked online and I decided I wanted to serve a sweet and salty charcuterie board. And my cocktail, my signature drink, would be an easy, delicious, refreshing punch, non-alcoholic punch. And guess what I did? I added go shopping on my to-do list. So I was able to remove the meal planning and signature cocktail from my list and add go shopping. And do you know what I did, guys? I went shopping on a Wednesday. I got all the ingredients that I needed so that when Saturday came around, all I had to do was set it up. And can I just say, old me or self-sabotaging Erica would wait until Friday night or Saturday morning, knowing full well that by Friday night, I am done, okay? I don't want to go to the supermarket. I don't want to buy anything. I want to just come home and I want to lay on my couch and I want to binge watch Being Mary Jane. That's a new show I'm watching on Hulu. But the Eric I aspire to become knew that if I did that, that would mean that I would have to go shopping on Saturday the day that everybody was going to come over and I would be frazzled and I would be stressed and I would be having to clean up my house and go grocery shopping and set everything up and already thinking about that exhausted her. So instead, she went on a Wednesday and she was able to stay home on Saturday and just prepare for her guests, have a slow morning and then welcome her guests when they arrived. It was amazing. And that to me was a big win. Now I'm not saying that I'm cured 100%. I know that I will fall. I can fall. We all can fall into old habits. But that's not what this is about. This isn't about perfection. This is about taking something that you become aware of and doing something about it. After all, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? (laughs) And that's my video for today, guys. I'm feeling very much in a playful mood. I know I haven't been on for a few months. Life has been wonderful, to be very honest. Work has been amazing. I did a little traveling in August. And we even adopted a second cat. All in all, I am so beyond blessed in my life. I pinch myself sometimes because I can't believe that I get this peace, this calm, this ease. But I also recognize that I can multiply that feeling by challenging some patterns and habits that I've fallen into. And this is an example of a small win that we can all celebrate. Until next time. Love yourself. Shine that light. And take care.